Yeah, let's, I see a couple of people are joining right now. Okay. So I've, um, I've muted everybody at the moment. Um, it's going to be um, you and me. And, um, and then at the end, um, might be opening for any questions that uh, some of the participants might have. That's okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. I'll do my best to answer questions. I have, um, I have uh, a list of questions I can go to that uh, yeah. I need to. Yeah, thank you for um, joining us on this interview. And um, uh, yeah, the reason we're doing this is um, because we like to um, help as many people as we can. So we know um, a lot of people that have um, small businesses or they own a business or a self-employed people that have been affected by COVID-19. And um, luckily we have this um, stimulus package was approved by the Congress. Um, I believe it's about $349 billion if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes, that will correct. Be, um, that will be uh, a help for all these small businesses. And um, I just wanted to introduce you to uh, the other participants. Um, 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 we are doing this interview with uh, Mr. Wasim Ajuri, who is a um, relationship banker at um, for, for businesses at Citizens Bank. Would you mind telling us a few um, words about yourself and um, about your position at Citizen Bank? Yeah, uh, thank you, Ilya, for, for having me and um, you know, allowing me to speak on this platform that you've set up. So I, I do business banking for Citizens Bank. I've been in banking for uh, 12, over 12 years now, almost 13. And um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned uh, the COVID-19 situation that's kind of been on the forefront of everybody's mind at the moment. Um, what I do for Citizens Bank is I work with small business owners directly. So I'm a point of contact for small business owners um, and they can really talk to you about anything, whether it's, you know, how they manage their day-to-day their -day banking, how do they manage their cash flow, how do they um, maybe potentially purchase equipment in their business or help them with refinancing debt or even uh, purchasing commercial real estate. Um, and uh, I, so, so the market I cover primarily is, uh, I have clients that I work with in Dedham, Westwood, Hyde Park, uh, Newton, Quincy. So kind of how mostly Dedham, but then a little bit of the outskirts. And then I, I work with the branches in that territory. Um, so that's just a little bit about what I do. Uh, personally, um, and I have a wife and uh, I have a kid who's 15 months. So i uh, just let you know <laughs> that I'm sure uh, mm -hmm. all of us are a little, going a little crazy, those who have children as well, you know, working from home these days. Thank you, thank you. So <clears throat> just wanted to ask you about this uh, Paycheck Protection Program and um, okay. just wanted to know, um, you can give us a brief, like uh, who can who can apply for this program where uh, who can qualify for this program and which are some of the steps that um, they can take you know uh, to apply for this program yeah absolutely so um, really any business owner can apply for this program as long as they have less than 500 or fewer employees um, and uh, business owners can request up to a maximum of 10 million. Um, and basically, um, if you're a nonprofit, if you are a corporation, an LLC, you know, all these business owners are eligible uh, for this program. And really, it's pretty straightforward. So the intent behind the program is to help keep, uh, help, to help employers keep their employees employed, um, at least over the next eight weeks. So that's kind of you know, the time period that um, the, the Congress has put in place um, as, as, for, as far as when they think we'll be able to get, you know, through, uh, through COVID-19. Um, so that's just kind of high level, um, a little bit about the program. 
Yeah, and like, which are some of the steps? So uh, let's say I know that you reach out to me because uh, yes. I found the Citizen Bank and thank you. Um, Correct. Yeah, thank you for that. And um, we know that these business owners, they have to reach out to their bank or is it um, a website they can go in and apply or? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, um, so right now, most, so most banks are, are open to accept uh, their existing clients. Uh, yeah. This week, we've only opened applications for existing clients for them to apply because we want to pri pri prioritize them first. Yeah. Um, we're thinking hopefully by next week, we're going to be able to open it up to the public. Um, but as of right now, if you're a Citizens Bank client, you can go on our website, citizensbank.com. There's a business page on there, and right on the forefront, there's a COVID or coronavirus um, page that takes you right to the Paychecks Protection Program. Um, from there, you simply just uh, fill out your information, kind of um, request that you would like to receive an application. Within a matter of few hours, you will get an email um, letting you know you can go ahead and apply uh, for this uh, for this program. Yeah. Do they need to have any documents at the time they do the application or is it like a second step after they've done it? Like, or do they have to make any, do they need to be prepared at this moment? So what's some of your advice? So yeah. They can, they can speed up the process. So I understand that by next week you can be opening to the public and there might be more applications coming in. So. Correct. So at this time, um, really the documents. So a lot of business owners have an accountant that does their payroll or they work with larger payroll companies such as ADP or Paychex. Yeah. So these larger companies and accountants have actually put together a document that a small business owner, whoever they work with, can ask for a PPP document and they will provide it to them. Um, so they can take that document and all those numbers on there, they can translate it over to the application. And then as far as uh, additional documents they need, um, really they just need to just be able to support the figures that they inputted on the application. And then uh, <clears throat> all we're doing at Citizens Bank is just verifying that the numbers, um, excuse me, that the documents support the numbers they entered on the application. And then, um, you know, we're just gonna kind of underwrite it and make sure all the business information is correct. And then, you know, from time of application to, when a client can expect to receive their funds, uh, we're anticipating it should take no more than 10 days. So okay. a pretty, pretty quick turnaround time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds great. I had a question. How about those uh, like self-employed, uh, those that don't have a, a small business, but they're self-employed, like we have a lot, mm -hmm. uh, like a, a plumber or an electrician or, yeah, even a realtor or loan officer who is a self-employed, uh, can they apply now, or what's the, or can they uh, benefit from this program? Yes, so absolutely, they can benefit from it as well. Uh, starting tomorrow, April tenth, um, anyone who's self-employed, anyone who's a ten ninety nine or you know independent contractor, they can apply uh, tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, they can apply. Starting from tomorrow. So that's that's yes. a really good news. So, and then they can apply at at your bank, or they don't have to be a customer of any bank. That they have to apply to that bank, or they can apply to any banks that participate in this program. So um, as of today, um, you know, all the banks are just saying go to your bank um, yeah. until we kind of take care of all, our all clients first. So, you know, if there's a, if a client that banks at, uh, at another institution outside of Citizens, they should go there first. And then, um, you know, like I said, next week, um, at least Citizens, we plan on opening it up to non-customers as well. Um, so really we want to prioritize our existing clients first, and then we're going to take care of the clients tomorrow that are looking to apply that are 1099, independent contract or self-employed. And then um, we'll kind of give that those uh, those customers, you know, a window to be able to apply, 
upload their documents, kind of get them through the process of getting approved. And then at some point next week, we plan on opening it up to the public. So other clients who may have a smaller bank um, that, they, that they work with may not have this program um, for different reasons. Um, so they can apply, you know, through citizens. Um, some banks have only, are probably going to be only accepting existing clients, uh, regardless of how far along we are in the program, because uh, they're keeping it open until the end of June. But I would assume by then, uh, most of the fun, most of the, the funds that Congress has put into the program would probably be dried up. Yeah, um, one question that I had that I've been receiving a lot is that. Okay. What I've heard, you know, about this program, that this is um, first come, first serve. I mean, some people right. say that, that if the money is going to run out, then yeah, uh, some of the applicants that are late at filing their application, they might not benefit about this program. Can you go a little further on this one and explain if it's true or uh, about about um, like availability of these funds? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we, we assume that the funds are going to dry up. Um, there was some talk yesterday on the news and some articles I read and um, today I was on some calls and some of the information that was shared with us is that we can't say for 100% certain, but we anticipate that uh, the administration and Congress would fund an additional 250, $250 billion into the program. Mm -hmm. um, so we hope that happens because obviously we don't wanna leave anybody um, hanging and not be able to take care of our small business owners. But um, you know, we'll, we'll see how quickly that gets done. Um, but that's, that's what we hope for, you know, best case scenario is to take care of everybody. That's great. Now, um, I have a question from um, one of the participants, Altin. Is asking okay. um, uh, for someone to apply. Do you, mm -hmm. need, which is the person who is self-employed? Uh, yes. Ten ninety nine. Do they need to have a business or a checking account in order to apply for this with the existing bank, or if they go to if they don't have an account with you and they apply, do they need to have an account with um, Citizen Bank, for example, or? Um, ideally, yes, they should have an account with Citizens or some type of uh, banking relationship with Citizens Bank, um, you know, because if they start going through the process and they don't have an account with us, uh, and the whole reason why is we're asking for an account is because it'll just be a lot faster for us to be able to, you know, go through the whole process because we already have all of their business inf information yeah. and then eventually when the client gets uh approved and we're going to be ready to fund the account we already have their account inf information on file so that's it would be better if they had an account with us just to make the process faster and as i mentioned earlier we don't know exactly when but we anticipate at some point next week that you know we would open up to the public but i don't know how quickly we'd be able to, you know, do from application day one to funding uh, for a non-citizens client. So, but that's why, you know, I would advise to go to your bank if you need the funding as soon as possible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for um, um, clarifying that. Uh, another question that we had is that, um, let's say I initially someone applies and mm -hmm. submit an application, and okay. you mentioned that within 48 hours, they might receive an email from the bank within 48 hours or? From, the, from the time they submit, uh, the get, submit an application? Yeah. Yeah. But they're not so, 48 hours or longer or? Yeah, I would say um, it, up to 48 hours. For example, we had a client today, this morning I was working with, he signed up to receive an alert. He actually already got an application in this afternoon, and then he was already uh, getting asked to upload documents um, just about half an hour ago. So 
Um, it's moving pretty quickly now that we've kind of went through the first wave of all those clients that have, have applied for this. Um, so I would probably say it's getting turned around a lot faster now today versus when we started getting these applicants uh, earlier in the week. So if somebody, for example, hasn't received an, an email within mm -hmm. 48 hours, do you advise them to reach out to you or to their relationship banker to see what's, what's the process, what, what is the process? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would definitely advise to reach out to uh, a relationship uh, bank or a manager that they work with, uh, somebody like myself, or they can reach out to a local branch uh, to find out if, you know, um, why they haven't received a, an application yet. But we haven't had any clients really that um, there's been very few um, that I can I can say that have not received an application after they sign up for an alert uh, through our web page. Yeah. Yeah, this sounds, uh, sounds really good. Um, so is there anything else that, I mean, we need to tell our audience um, what's the best advice in this case? So. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would just say, um, you know, definitely, I think um, we're all a little bit on the edge um, as far as being able to, you know, uh, get, um, this this loan, which turns into a grant, uh, as long as you use 75% of it for your employees. But, uh, you know, we're working really hard. Um, I know other banks out there are working really hard to uh, be able to process a large volume of applications. Um, you just think about how many applications we see a year that SBA gets versus what they're getting probably now in a day, right? <laughs> so, um, so things are moving very fast. We're learning on the go. Uh, it's, you know, I would just compare it to what a lot of doctors are, you know, seeing in the, in the emergency rooms, right? They're getting a lot of patients, heavy volume. They're doing the best to, you know, uh, move these patients, um, through, um, you know, um, through the ER and get them out of the, the hospital. So it's more or less the same, you know, we're, we're trying really hard to, to do everything we can. Um, I would just say if you're a business owner, you know, definitely take advantage of the program. Uh, you know, it's going to help you through at least the next couple months. And then, um, you know, it's going to help you keep your, your business going and help your employees uh, stay on payroll. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Kristen, how are you doing? Thank you for all that information. Uh, You're welcome. So, because I've, I've heard this a, a bunch, uh, independent yep. contractors and, um, and self-employed yep. people. Some of them have established business checking accounts with their banks. Some of them have not. Okay. Is just, you, you need, to your knowledge, uh, yes. if you have a business checking account with whoever bank you, uh, you bank with, can you go to them and can you apply for, uh, for uh, this program? Yes. So, so, so sorry, you were a little breaking up. So your question was, if you, have, if you have an existing relationship at your bank, can you go to them and apply? But um, let's suppose that you don't have a, uh, an established business checking account with that particular bank, but just a regular uh, check. Okay. Could you? Oh, personal checking account. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so as of today, uh, as far as, you know, citizens and uh, I think most banks, uh, you need a business checking account to, to be able to, um, to apply. Um, okay. And you probably would need one to apply at some point. The reason being is because when you open up a business account, there's a set of questions that you go through, um, you know, are just some of our policies versus a regular checking account. So all, you know, whether it's, you know, who, who has ownership of the company, tax ID number, because um, all of that is getting verified by the, uh, the SBA to make sure there aren't duplicates applications that are being, you know, kind of go through the process. Um, so you would need to establish a, a business account. Okay. So for someone... Does that, does that answer your, your, your question, uh, Alfino? It, it kind of does. <laughs> okay. So some, someone like this, you know, you advise that if it's a self-employed person, like a plumber, electrician, realtor, loan officer, who has a 1099, your first yeah. advice will be uh, go to the bank, open that, uh, business checking account, correct? Correct, yes. And then you 
go and apply or they can apply at, at the same time they can open the account so which will be uh, so the, 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 I would advise to open the account first um, you know it's pretty straightforward to, to get a tax ID number you just request it through you know irs.gov and then uh, depending on how uh, what kind of structure or entity you know your company is, is going to be even if it's a sole proprietorship um, it's pretty straightforward um, you know, to get that process. And then you go to your bank, open up the account, they'll go through uh, the whole account opening procedure. And then afterwards, even the same day, you can go ahead and, you know, apply for the program. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Like for, for example, I, I've had, I've had a few clients that I've been working with that their other bank, uh, their smaller banks, credit unions, you know, they, they, they're not really offering this program at this time. So literally they've gone into a citizen's bank and they've opened up a business account. And then later that day, they've been able to apply for the program. Yeah. That's so there's, 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 there's no, like, like we don't have any rules around, you know, how long you need to be a customer for. You just need to have an account um, again, because just the whole uh, checking every, you know, all the business information. Um, and also we just need an account to put the funds into once you get approved. Someone at, at a small bank, one of those small banks that you're saying, uh, actually mentioned that you should already have an established business checking account in order to apply for this program. Not a new one that you can open and, now and then apply for. It. I'm sorry. I I didn't hear you. Uh, I can. Uh, so um, the question was that he. Um, uh, someone reach out to these small banks, you know, this, or, or as you mentioned before, okay. it's, um, like community banks or credit unions. And their policy was that if you don't have an established account, let's say uh, prior to this uh, virus or COVID-19, uh, you may not be okay. able to apply. Does this... Uh, also apply for your bank in this case? Does someone has to have a established business checking account for a period of time or they can open right now and that they still can apply? They can open right now and still apply. The only rule we have, and it's not our rules in SBA, it's, it's from the, the SBA guidelines, is they just need to have been in business before February 15th of 2020, that's it. Oh, so they have been in business. So this applies for small businesses and like self-employed. Uh, Correct. First, okay. That's yes. As long as, long as they've been doing business as a, you know as a, as a small business or self-employed before February fifteenth of this year, um, then then that then that's fine. They can they can. There's no time period as far as how long they need to have an account for with citizens. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I think yeah. um, we covered pretty much everything. So um, I don't know if, uh, let me see if it's more questions here. Um, but I think we Pretty much, we answer all the questions that we had. Okay. Um, so thank you so much. And um, if someone wanted, someone wanted to um, to reach out to you, uh, what's the best way to reach out to you? You know, through email or phone call, or I can walk to your bank or set up an appointment. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I would probably say email is the best way to reach out to me. Um, just because, um, you know, if you call me, I might be on another line or might be on a conference line. So I may not know who's calling me and I, I, for some reason, I don't always get voicemail, but if you email me at, um, and you know, Ilya, I don't know if you want to provide the email address, but it's, uh, you know, we Sam dot a jury at citizensbank.com. Um, you want me to spell that out or what do you think is the best way to get it out? There? Yeah, I can, um, I can share with the the participants later on your, your information so uh, okay yeah perfect i can do that so yeah if you send me an email um just leave me your your name and phone number um and any questions
questions you have, um, I'll certainly get back to you um, pretty quickly. Thank you, Asim. Um, thank you so much. And um, thank you for this interview. Was, um, thank you. You explained pretty much uh, everything, um, all the questions. Uh, right. I'd like to thank you. And um, as always, uh, stay safe. And you too. Uh, <laughs> we'll uh, reach out to you in the future if um, we will need any help from you. Thank you. Great. Absolutely. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you, Ilya. Thank you. Thanks Great for having time. me. Thank you. Thanks All for right. the info. Bye, Take guys. Care. Bye now.